Project time. I'm going to replace the RCA RF out on the back of this Atari 2600 because I'm tired of the wire being permanently attached. It's a bad design. No, no consoles do it anymore. And it's a pain in the ass to move around when you have to unhook it from something that the wire goes through the cabinet. So I'm going to cut this bad boy off and replace in the back of the unit one of these. That way it has a standard coaxial out right about there or somewhere here. So we can just use a standard cable wire to hook it up to our TV. Should also improve the image quality because it's a thicker, heavier wire you can use. It'll also allow the best game ever to look even better on the TV. On this model there's only four screws that need removed from the bottom of the unit. This should give you access to the inside. I've already seen the inside of an Atari before so there's not much going on in here you'll see in a minute. Now if the screws are removed you just have to kind of pry the case a little bit. It's kind of strange the way it's in there so you gotta pull it up a little bit and wiggle it and you can get it out. See how the little buttons are still holding it. The wire you can pull it through the entire case or you can just wait a moment this is my camera here and you can see that it's not much going on that's it that's uh that's basically the atari on the back end lose my uh, air gun here to blow out some of the dust i'm going to clean this thing up a little bit before uh i put it back together just because now that i have it apart it's got 30 years of dust in it oh a little piece of paper that's maybe it's a secret message or it's when it was built. Okay, not really need that. Off to the junk. No way that was 1972 either. This would have been 82 or newer because it actually says 2600 on the front and it's the all black Vader edition. Not necessarily Vader himself, just what people like to call it. So the buttons kind of give you a little trick when you pull them out. You just got to pry a little bit. There you go. All out. And that's the whole Atari. You see it's a little dusty on the top too. I'll wash that off before I put it back together with some water. Now is the best time to do that. And the other end is actually just an RCA connector as well. So you can just simply pull it and set it off to the side so it's not in your way any longer. Take a look at the board. You can see the switches. Atari logo right there on the PCB. Huge capacitor there. I think that's a capacitor. I don't know. Some sort of an adjustment. I guess that I'm getting off camera uh, right there and not much going on you can see there's a couple adjusters the back you already seen but nice shielding there the older model would have been wider at the top because it had six buttons and what I did was took a simple cable amplifier apart so I can get some connectors for free basically I'm just gonna desolder these so I have the extra connectors even has the little nut so I can put it on nice and tight doesn't move around. Uh, mount this sticking out the back of the unit and on the inside magic of editing I already have it done you'll see that I can just solder those together I'll probably also wrap it in some tape but I'll solder them together mount it sticking out of the case like that. Alright there's the finished connector all soldered together and I need a 3 8 inch uh, drill bit. Wood bit seems to work the best on this type of plastic so I'll put the hole right about where I said earlier, right there. It's a nice spot for it. And the connector will push right through the inside, and I'll be able to put a nut on it and hold it into place. A wood bit does pretty decent on this plastic, actually. It's a nice thick plastic from the early 80s. If they'd have made this any later, it might have been too thin and would have cracked. But uh, as you can see, what you want to do is make sure when you put this in, I'm going to put it in here to show you if I can line up the holes. Just make sure you don't put your hole where the board is going to be in the way. You need to have a nice space. But the way the Atari board raises up, you should have plenty of room underneath if you put it similar in similar location that I'm using right there. Here we go. Let's not break it. Nice and slow with the drill. If you force it too much, you could crack the plastic. But like I said, the older the plastic, except when it's too old, it's brittle. But at this stage, it's a nice thick plastic with still a good bit of uh, give to it so it shouldn't crack. There we go. Once you get to that point it's only a matter of seconds and you're all the way through. Yep, done. Nice and clean hole. Looks almost professionally done. Now we do is make sure there's no more burrs in the way. Do a test fit with one of the other ones. Fits nice. Looks good. We'll go with that. 
And now we can try the wire in there. Push it in. Put the little washer on. Put the nut on. You're going to want to make sure you get this pretty tight so it doesn't uh, spin around. Because when you go to screw the uh, cable lines on, it's going to want to move around a little bit. So as long as you make this nice and tight, that little lock washer will help hold it. Uh, just hold it nice and tight with one hand and take a wrench and just give it a little extra torque. It'll kind of push it into the plastic a little bit and keep it from moving around when you tighten it. The problem isn't when you tighten it, you'll actually be tightening up the, the screw itself, but when you loosen it, if you had it too tight, it may try to turn the actual connector and could break the wires on the inside of the unit. So just be a little careful or even put a little glue or something on the inside to help it. To put it back together, all you do is reverse the steps. Pretty easy. Be sure to plug in your RCA cable onto the board, but that's the easy part to do. Nice and no wires hanging. That is great. Now that is your entire Atari unit. Kind of cleaned it up a little bit, got some of the dirt out of it. Now we can finally test it out with the world's greatest video game of all time. First power on. Works. So I must have did something right. Uh, the screen actually looks better than it does in this video because my camera has a weird effect with the CRT and that little bit of fuzz you see once in a while is actually because of the TV itself. I don't really have any other uh, CRTs, but they are the best TVs to play old games on. Now we can get down to business and finally beating this awesome game. As always, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Come on over to FlashbackGamer.com, check out the articles, and tell your friends. And never ever play this game. Look at this. I'm in a spot where you cannot get out of this hole. You move over a little bit, you come on up, boom, he's right there. You go knock back in the hole. You will never be able to get out of this pit. This is the worst game. I thought it was the best. I've now been proven wrong.